We will now look at uh, trends and impacts of foreign aid in the social sectors. Please welcome uh, Mr. Miguel Nino Sarasua, Research Fellow at UNU Wider. Well, thank you very much, um, Sharon. Um, I'm very pleased today to be here, and uh, I want to thank CEDA for hosting this event, and especially to my colleagues who have uh, made all efforts to come today. So we really appreciate your contribution. Um, I will not talk about results because my colleagues will do it. Um, what I'm planning to do is just to brief or give you a very general overview of what has happened in, in foreign aid to the social sectors. So, I should take this. Um, so if we see this graphic, you will see that in the red line, foreign aid has been increasing over time. And that reflects an important effort from the international community to actually allocate resources to developing countries. Um, aid has multiplied by four over the last 40 years. So it reflects a lot of efforts <coughs> from the international community. So those efforts in many ways have been captured by uh, the social sectors. You see the blue line, and the, you reflect, this is the proportion of foreign aid allocated by the major sectors. So you can see that from the 90s, uh, the social sectors have been capturing a lot of uh, support from foreign aid. And that, in many ways, is the reflection on many things, and I just want to draw attention to a very few of them. Um, of course, our knowledge about what works in development has improved over the last 30 years. In the 60s and 70s, if you see um, the understanding about how donor countries could support developing countries was understood through infrastructure. So most of the money went to bridges, roads, you know, building the capacity of these countries that many of them were coming uh, from a colonial period. But research um, from different disciplines have shown that um, the investment in what Finn referred to human capital is incredibly important for helping developing countries to, to develop. So this uh, knowledge base in many ways explains this shift in understanding what is important for, for development. At the same time, from this particular knowledge, um, there have been important efforts um, to introduce global initiatives. <clears throat> for example, the Education for All initiative. Um, uh, in many ways can explain how the reason why so much attention has been paid to basic education. Whether these efforts have uh, returned in good quality of education is a different matter, and we will be discussing these issues later on. At the same time, many initiatives have been introduced to support, for example, vaccination campaigns in the 1980s, not a long time ago, in the, in the uh, 30 years ago, 17% lost one seven percent of children in developing countries were vaccinated just 30 years ago. It's a long, long time ago. And by the end of the 2000s, um, more than 80% of children in developing countries were vaccinated. So that reflects a tremendous effort from the international community and the developing countries themselves to improve the basis for improving human capital. And uh, these efforts in many ways have been incorporated in the, the Millennium Development Goals, which um, in many ways embrace many of the urgencies and pressing issues in development. Um, but if we think about um, a, um, the contribution of foreign aid to the, the, the developing countries, as you can see in this table, and if you compare foreign aid as a percentage of what national own, uh, countries actually uh, produce themselves, has been declining. So take East Asia, Latin America, um, South Asia, the contribution of foreign aid to the national income has been declining. And it's, it's uh, for every hundred dollars that a country produces in developing countries, less than one percent actually come from foreign aid. So it has been declining over time. This is at the national level. <clears throat> But if you look at the contribution of foreign aid to the social sectors, how much is spent in education, in health, then the, the, the pictures change. Even large economies like India, which are growing, have been growing very fast, the contribution to, to the social sector is very, very important. It's about 15%. So despite the fact that these economies are growing in terms of size and the capacity, still they heavily rely on international support. So, um, this is a very important uh, thing that in many ways draws attention to 
different understandings about how the international community can better support foreign aid and the social sectors in, more in particular. So, um, draw attention to the need of supporting the, the national capabilities of countries to, first of all, have the capacity to raise revenues and deliver social services. So, this is the administrative capacity of these countries. Um, but the way um, donors have been operating so far has not been very helpful in that perspective. And the reason is because we still see donors relying heavily on project aid. So, as you can see, more than two-thirds of the aid allocations are still going and challenged through project aid, which, although they, have, they contribute to the development process, has, they have a lot of problems in terms of supporting the domestic capabilities, capabilities of these countries. So, um, I, we will be discussing issues about these aid modalities, but I just want to draw attention to one particular issue, which is the generation of knowledge for finding out what works in development assistance. Because foreign aid in many ways has been relying on project aid, there are some issues about what can be actually generated about what works. So many of these pilots are small in scale, small in scale so they capture a few thousands. They, share, they have usually short time window of analysis. So one pilot, the average age of a pilot is five years. So um, you really don't capture the impact that development assistance can actually have in the longer term with such a short term window of analysis. So this is another constraint. And at the same time, um, um, it's very difficult to actually find out whether what works in one pilot can be um, replicated in other contexts, or whether if we scale up these pilots to a national scale, they will actually work in the way we are expecting. And, um, and when we think about, as, as a researchers, how we can improve the knowledge base, we find out very often with difficulties in capturing this, because data in developing countries is poor. It remains very challenging to do research in developing countries and find out about what works. So um, if you think about how much uh, money has been allocated to support, for example, national statistical offices in developing countries. Uh, last year, about $200 million were allocated to this particular activity, to support the national statistical offices in all the developing countries. $200 million. Just one single country, like my country, Mexico, it's a middle-income country, has spent $350 million the same year for, to collect data. So you can get a sense about how underfunded you know, these institutions are. So if we want to have a long-term perspective in many ways about development, what Finn was referring to, we need to see or um, find different ways to relate and to collect information about what works. So I just want to stop here, and um, my colleagues will have a lot of interesting results to show today, and uh, thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm.